guys, welcome back to the channel. We, uh, yeah, I say we, we're on a little field trip here. We're uh, on the way to Tick Performance area to drop our obvious transmission off. And hopefully we'll get to talk to Johnny and Jonathan. Uh, if we're lucky enough, maybe they'll tear this transmission down while we're there and if we see anything wrong with it. And uh, I have a special guest with me. Turbo two valves. Turbo two valves back. Turbo two valves back. We ain't heard from you in a while, but we see you every day. We you know, we work with you every day. So down at the shop, uh, it's been a while since we've heard anything about your car. Uh, you want to give us any updates on it? I know I know you was waiting on some parts. So yeah, we had like a brick wall trying to find some fans. Finally got those in. Just trying to get a few things together. Hopefully, be able to throw it together for next season. Yeah, I know that. Uh, I know we've told everybody that you know it is a stick shift car, and you know we're looking to grow the stick shift class next year, and that's pretty exciting there, anyway. Hopefully so we got a few cars to add in. Hopefully so. You know, a couple, a couple other cars at the shop, and the other one's a stick car, and then, then we've got another Fox body there sitting there. This, this should be uh, if everything goes good with it, it'll be a good contender too. Should, should grow two or three cars. Hopefully, but hopefully uh, more than that. Like I said, your, your car is running. I mean, you know, it runs and drives. Runs and drives. Not for long. <laughs> not for long. Why not for long? It ain't got coolant in it. They got what? It ain't got coolant. Why ain't you got coolant in it? The lines aren't all together. Oh, okay. But we got it where it won't freeze up or nothing like that. So, guys, let's get on down the road and see what we got going on. Building right over there. But there's where Tick Performance started. Well, two bays over there. They got a beautiful view up here. It's hard to see it all from here, but it's it's beautiful out there when you get out and look around. My favorite person. What's up, Eric? Shipping stuff. How's, how's it been going? You got my Christmas present? Hey! Look at that. Where else can you go, guys, and get some beef jerky? That's awesome. This is the man right here if you're ordering from Tick Performance. One of them. One of them. But this is the man. There's a few. There's a few. We do it okay. How are you liking it out here? Eh, some days it's cold, some days it's hot, some days it's loud. And some days it's just today. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say uh, quite a few, few of you recognize this car right here. If you don't know it, this guy right here said look out next year. Jonathan? Appreciate you uh, talking to it with us this evening. Uh, coming up the road, we was talking about how Tick Performance started, and uh, I actually showed Kevin the old building where y'all started at. And I told him, I said, if I can get Jonathan to tell us uh, how Tick Performance started and how it got its name. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> Tick Performance got started by my dad in 2003. Uh, I was working at an independent garage, just had finished up automotive tech at the community college. And he lost his job in a factory. You know, he worked in a furniture factory and he decided that he wanted to open a shop. So he picked out the name Tick Performance and the name basically came from a nickname that he had earned when he was younger, uh, his car buddies. And there's a story behind it. He probably should tell it. But I'll, I'll give you the the short version. <laughs> he 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 had a brother that had a Chevelle. I don't know what year or anything really specific about it, but it had a lower powered engine in it as far as Chevelles are concerned. So maybe it was a 350, and it was completely stock, bone stock. 
and some other guy in town had a Ford Torino or whatever it may have been, you know, Ford body style car that would be comparable to a Chevelle. And they decided they were going to street race. And I mean, I guess that's something they probably did a lot of. So they were talking about the race. I don't even know if they raced. I mean, I guess they, they probably did. But the when they were talking about the race, my dad told the guys that were with the Ford, you know, crew that the Chevelle would outrun the Ford three times, a uh, hundred times out of a hundred, I think is what he said. And when they got done outrunning him a hundred times, they popped the hood and showed him that it was stocked as a tick. And of course, every, all the other guys, you know, they died laughing because they were like, stupid, you know, why, how do you correlate a car or an engine being stocked to a tick? So they started picking on him and stuff and, and called him Tick. So it was a nickname and that's how Tick, you know, came to be Tick. So of course, we, when we actually, you know, that was probably in the, the early 80s or maybe even the late 70s when that happened. But we opened in 2003 and, you know, because of that story, he wanted to name it Tick. And the uh, shop you opened this, what, just two or three miles down the road from right here? Yeah, so <clears throat> we, we were on Riverside Drive, if you're familiar with Mount Area Riverside Park. We was right across from the park. Uh, the building was old Pike Electric building. Uh, I don't remember it being that, but that's the story all the older people around town, you know, always say, you know, if you tell them it was in the old Pike building, they knew. But basically someone bought that building and they divided it into like six sections. And we leased, you know, one of the smaller sections. So essentially we had a garage that was maybe 30 by 40, you know, the section of that you know, larger building. So for, I guess, four years, you know, when we started, we, we spent four years in that 30 by 40 space. So you got up around 2007, 2008, and started looking for possibly bigger building, more work. Yeah, well, actually we weren't looking for you know a bigger building or a different building at all at the time I mean we we were obviously out of space you know with our 30 by 40 space we we had started working on more performance cars you know than than originally you know as we started the business I mean we worked on just anything that would pay the bills you know so we might work on a minivan or you know church members cars or you know your grandparents vehicles whatever you know we we're just trying to make a living you know, I started helping my dad shortly after it opened a few months later. I didn't really get, get into that, but uh, pretty much from the beginning, I, you know, helped him. And uh, so anyway, you know, we, we were working on cars for Alvin and Kelly Anderson, PCM for less, that's PCM of NC now, but we were working on some of their cars and Alvin started tuning all of our cars that we worked on because we didn't do in-house tuning. And Alvin was a student at, uh, UNC Charlotte, I think. So he was kind of part-time tuning. And we traveled, you know, a lot to Charlotte, uh, Fort Mill, just all around the Charlotte area to shops to have cars tuned. And Alvin would do the dyno tuning on uh, Pro Dino's mobile dyno. <clears throat> so, you know, that was, it was a lot of effort, you know, a lot of work to, you know, build a customer's car in Mount Airy and then take it, you know, two hours or so to Charlotte and hang out all night long, basically, in some cases, just to get the car tuned. And of course, some people would take their own car, but a lot of people wanted to pick their car up as a finished product, so we were doing that a lot. And uh, one day, Alvin called, I guess, and he said that he was finishing up with his school, I guess, and he was planning to try the tuning thing full time, and he was looking at shops in Mooresville, you know, and he just, I guess he wanted to let us know that he was going to be a little bit closer and he's going to have a solid, you know, location and, you know, it's going to make things better for us. And before the end of the conversation, I kind of suggested, well, what if we bought, a, you know, or not bought, but what if we leased a building together, you know, and, you know, we split the bills, we split all the utilities, we split everything down the middle and, you know, we'd move to Mooresville. You know, he was moving up from Charlotte, we'd be moving down to Mooresville and, so we made plans to look at a couple of buildings and uh, I think maybe the second or third building we looked at, we ended up leasing uh, for two years with those guys. And um, of course we moved down to Mooresville 
the, the shop had an apartment in the shop, you know, above the office area. So Joey and I, Joey's our, our business manager. Uh, he, he and I lived in an apartment in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we paid a little extra on the rent, you know, to cover, you know, our living arrangements. But uh, anyway, we, we did that for five years and decided to, to move back home. You know, we parted ways with PCM, uh, started looking for, for places up here. It, it, it was good for both, though, even though you oh, parted yeah. I ways. Mean, each business fed off the other as far right. as, you know, it, it, if we had a job, you know, <clears throat> that we were doing an install on, obviously they were going to get the, the job to tune it. And, you know, sometimes cars were brought in for repairs that, you know, maybe it didn't come in for needing a tune, but, you know, we realized or, you know, it, it did need a tune. So it ended up, you know, leading to a lot of work for those guys. And then, of course, on the flip side of that, you know, a car comes in for a tune and maybe it needs injectors or a fuel pump or, or a, you know, whatever re replaced or repaired before, you know, the, the tune could really be completed. So then we would do that work. So e each business, you know, helped the other. Uh, before it was over with, you know, both, both of our businesses had kind of grown to the point where, you know, schedules were, were, were booked up or backed up. and. You know, there was some head bumping going on. And of course, we wanted to get back to, to Mount Airy anyway. Um, the whole time we were in Mooresville, my dad drove from Mount Airy to, to Mooresville each day. So there was basically a, a 80 mile one way drive. So that was, a, you know, the biggest deciding factor is you know, he lived in Mount Airy still. Uh, Matt Goins, one of our, our guys here, one of our main guys here now still, uh, was a technician for us at the time. And he also lived in Mount Airy still. So. That was the main reason to move back home. Of course, we just wanted to, to grow the business more, you know, make our own way. So at that point, you know, because we, we did find the current building that we're in and uh, needed to, you know, have the ability to tune cars at that point because our tuner was not making the move with us. You know, they, they stayed in, in Mooresville. So at that point's when I started doing the tuning. I actually had Scott come in and work for us for a little while from uh, Carolina Performance, you know, did the tuning for us. And, but eventually, you know, I ended up taking over the tuning and, and, you know, we did that up until, I don't know, I'd say three years ago, maybe is when we stopped really taking in customer work, tuning, you know, that kind of stuff. And we, we've shifted more into manufacturing uh, parts that we make, our, our clutch products, hydraulics, uh, lots of just all kinds of parts really for Lake Model GM and, and LS based engines primarily. Yeah, since y'all been back to Mount Airy, I've, I've seen you grow even even more up here and you know, I've seen when you started up here in Mount Airy, down to Moors, well back to Mount Airy and I've seen what the, the shop here in Mount Airy looks like now and how you've progressed over the years here to like you said, no, you know, no more installs, and but to go in there and look now versus what it was. I mean, you guys are not even slowing down. You just you just keep going and going, which is what everybody, all the car guys want to see. They want to be able to have somebody they can rely on, go to parts for, and then just Jonathan being who he is <laughs> with the good old grub worm. But that's the back story on Tick Performance, and I sure do appreciate your time, Jonathan. And uh, anything for 2022? As far as business or the car? Business, cars, anything, anything you want to put out there? Uh, you know, from a business side of things, I mean, we're still growing. Uh, we've got another CNC machine coming in soon. We're looking to make, you know, continue our product line of shifters and uh, transmission components, uh, specifically the billet front plates. We'd like to do those for Corvettes and uh, some other applications too. So uh, we're, we're growing as fast as we possibly can, it seems, in, in the business side of things. As far as a race car goes, um, maybe it'll be LT junk still. I don't know about that. Uh -oh. Maybe it won't. So All right, we'll have to, teaser. <laughs> teaser. Teaser. We'll have to see. But Stick uh, class on, stick shift class on notice. Yeah, I think we got something for those guys. We we had a little a few issues up at World Cup, you know, that could have could have went, I think, a good bit faster. But we 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 had some stuff come up, and instead of 
pushing and pushing, we decided to just try to get it through the weekend and, and make it to the finals, which we did and, and got beat. <laughs> that happens, but. Hey, you went, you had fun, you had a good time, you come home safe, that's the main thing. Win some, lose some. Yeah, win some, lose some. And like I said, Jonathan, I sure do appreciate your time and uh, look forward to uh, the next go around with you. Yep, sounds good. Thank you.